everyone. Good morning. This is Build Series, and I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. Every summer, there is free theater in New York City. If you haven't gone yet, it's not too late, though. The upcoming show, Hercules, will run from August 31st through September 8th at the Delacorte Theater in Central Park and will be based on the iconic animated Disney film. Here to talk about the show is some of its stars, Jelani Aladdin, Krista Rodriguez, and Jeff Hiller. Welcome, guys. Hi there. Hello. Hello. So I was super pumped. I go to, I've been to the other two shows in the public theater and that whole world this summer. I love it so much. And I'm so glad that Hercules is coming. I'm a huge fan of the animated movie. Are you guys a fan? And like, what kind of prep did you guys do for this? Did you just like watch the movie over and over again? <laughs> Yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I think we're huge fans. Yeah, big fans. I mean, it was really exciting to get the news that they were doing this, and then we got to join in and um, start working on the process. We've been working on it for about a year now, um, just sort of putting our own stamp on it, which is really exciting. But, yeah, big big fans. I mean, Meg has always been, like, the, the best, you know, br uh, Disney princess. So now, even 20 years later, she's, like, even more badass, and she's she's pretty cool. Here's the funny part. I actually didn't watch the Disney animated movie as a kid. We watched this like weird janky version called um, By Good Times. Um, and so when um, I finally <laughs> saw this movie, I guess I was like about a teenager actually, and I was like, why didn't I know about this movie? Um, and I just recently we watched it again as we started rehearsing for this process, and I was like, it's such a good film. It's hilarious, it's um, heartfelt, the animation is so good. And so we have a big job to do in terms of bringing that to life. Good times? Good times, oh, yeah. yeah. Good times. It's like, like it, Hercules like he or, like was, he, or something. No, he was like super, super, super jacked. And there was like the big headed um, dog would looked really realistic and scary. It was like very, very like gory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, better better to watch that as a kid. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> definitely than I'm Disney like, yeah, movies. Yeah, send me the link. I kind of want to check that one yeah, out. I'll send you the, I'll show you the I picture. I want to know the full world of Hercules. Yeah. Speaking of, you play Hercules. Yes. So uh, what was that audition process for? like for you, why was this a role you were interested in? Um, well, fortunately enough, I didn't have to audition for this role, which is very, very nice. Um, but you know, it was not easy. I was I actually did a couple workshops and then they kind of told me that they were gonna look for somebody else to play the role. Um, so I kind of let it go and then it came back to find me. Um, and it's kind of been, it feels destined in a weird way. Like I feel like everything I've done in my life has kind of led up to this point, you know? Um, and I, I relate to Hercules' story a lot as a, as a young man who is from Brownsville, Brooklyn, who went to high school in Connecticut and left home at 13 to find success in this journey um, to become an actor and then having to, you know, be on Broadway and then to do a show like this is a dream come true. Yeah. What sort of uh, prep did you do for Hercules? Because he's known for his strength. <laughs> so I never want to see subject. the gym ever again. Right, because like, I definitely <laughs> looked at your Instagram Yeah. and I saw like an eight pack. So <laughs> did you have that before? Gains. <laughs> uh, gains, major gains. You know, you know. Um, I think my fitness journey really began with Kristoff and Frozen um, because, you know, I had to gain 10 pounds for that role. And so um, as this was heading and coming to a start, you know, Same. I took... <laughs> always you know, always having imagine? to gain 10 oh, yeah. pounds You need to gain role. weight for this role. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I started going to tumbling class as well because, you know, there's a lot of fight scenes in Hercules, so I wanted to make sure that I was able to do all that. Um, and I took some boxing classes as well to um, get my uh, heart rate up because there's a lot of really fast, high-paced numbers. And I kind of go from, like, a, a number to number to number, and it never stops. Yeah, I can attest he's using every single skill, <laughs> every single thing he's learned at boxing and gymnastics and the gym and singing and all of that. It's insane. I am Triple like, threat. Yeah. <laughs> Qu quintuple threat. It's insane. It's insane. Um, and Christy, you mentioned you play Meg. Yes. And she is such a bold and, like you said, your favorite princess. Me too, because she's so independent and outspoken, a little cynical. Totally. Y yeah, so she's a she New Yorker. Right. Yeah. yeah. So is she the same as she was in the movie, or like what new things did you guys bring to Meg for this staging? Well, she's definitely the same in that she is independent and that she's strong and she's outspoken and she's not, you know, bes beside the fact that she is somewhat in the th this ownership by Hades, she f has found her own niche where she is her own boss. Um, and I think that that has stayed, definitely that thread has kept going in ours. Um, because our show is a public works uh, production, which means we use members of the community, and we have 200 cast members, and 200. Uh, uh, and the majority of them are not at, even actors. They're just members of community who want to be involved. Um, 
they definitely had said to me they wanted they wanted Meg as if you came out of the subway in the Bronx or Upper Manhattan and you could you would say that girl's Meg. Um, she is really a New Yorker. She's tried and true. Like she has that sort of feeling like she belongs in this community of people who are just trying to get by day to day. So, you know, while in the movie she was maybe a little bit vampy in here, maybe she's a little bit like she could punch you. Ready. She will punch you. <laughs> so, um, which is exciting. And I think that that's the 20 year update of the, of the show. And as, as um, progressive as that was back then to have, a, she wasn't even a princess and she didn't, you know, need a man. Um, it's even more um, important now to be telling that story. So I'm excited about that. Was there a specific line or song or piece of costume that really sort of helped you become her or understand who she is as a character? Um, let me think about that. I, I think, well, we have a new song. Um, Alan Menken, who wrote all the songs for the original movie, uh, we have all those songs for, from the movie in the musical as well, but he wrote a new song for Meg where she gets an introduction song where, um, you know, in the movie she has the song that she won't say that she's in love, but in this one, as soon as you meet her, you get to hear a little bit of her story, a little bit of her personality, and I think that has helped. There's, like, a lot of backstory involved in it. There's a lot of um, attitude and strength and um, and yeah I think that that has really like set me in the mindset of, of who she is and then aside from that there's a bit of like a modern feel to her she's not in the toga dress you know um, she's got a cute little bob and um, <laughs> and uh, yeah so she's a bit more um, she's a bit like Brooklyn you know she sort of bought the clothes but and uh, walks the walk a little bit more modernly and you play Panic of yes. Pain and Panic of Pain and Panic now the research I did for Panic <laughs> was so intense I would imagine yeah lots of just studying dead people just being an actor <laughs> exactly yeah exactly Panic uh, yeah yeah, I'm one of the the bad guys henchmen, yeah. and uh, in the cartoon he's like a little, I don't know, noid animated yeah. noid or something. Yeah. He looks like goblin. a little demon. I was yeah. gonna say a little goblin -y. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and we've updated him. He's much more gritty. He's like if you got off the subway in Upper Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Hiller is hilarious in this show. Yeah. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> you should come. You should come just for that. Uh, who plays your your pain, and what kind of work did you guys do? Because the really it really is the chemistry between these two characters, totally, right? Totally right. So pain and pain. Right, it's a duo. Right. Well, pain is played by uh, a wonderful, uh, uh, not a professional actor, Nelson Chimilo, and he is a member of the community ensemble. And so uh, it's like a little bit like we had to sort of really like have come together with different types of language. And that's the whole beauty of public works is that you're not just being like, oh, you did viewpoints. OK, so, here it is. <laughs> you know, uh, w w we're really like talking and, and, and finding things and um, like you, you, you rediscover the passion of acting because it's not just like. What's my next gig? Um, that was smoking. I don't know. Uh, playing a trombone. <laughs> 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 Finger trombone. Then I do a slide whistle, and I get my next job. Uh, but it's it's this really beautiful moment where we came together and we had to talk about like what is it? You know, what are we doing together? And it's um, it's really exciting too to see the things that we find that you I don't know you would with another professional actor. Did you put on any sort of voice or heightened voice? Because I know in the movie, it's like Bobcat Goldwave plays pain. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a very distinct sort of character voice as well. No, I'm just going with my regular voice. <laughs> just your everyday. It's not really unusual at all. <laughs> Fair. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the modern updates to Hercules, which I love. And one of them is Hercules is Black, which I think is really yes. dope. And you've yes. been in this territory before because you played Kristoff, who was in Frozen, a white character. That's correct. And I know you got some kind of, you know, people had issues with that. Yeah. You know, what's actually been um, good to see is that, like, since um, Hercules was announced, I haven't gotten that kind of reaction as I did with Kristoff, which is actually quite refreshing. Um, but I think, you know, in terms of a modern update, you know, one, 
Hercules looks like me. Two, you know, there's a scene in the show where he gets high top sneakers instead of like, you know, sandals. And you're like, the different kind of things like that kind of like um, transform the look of the movie. And we uh, try to honor the things that are iconic. And we kind of, by having 200 New Yorkers in our show, naturally, it's going to feel modern. It's going to feel like Thebes is the the, 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 the world outside of this this window. Um, that's what we try to bring to the play and, the, and a kind of an authenticity of New York City, um, which kind of brings it to life in a really cool way. I have to say, doing scenes with the community, I have like, you know, uh, three or four really big um, town or crowd scenes with these people who are simply here because they love to act and they love to create something and they are using 100% themselves to bring the characters to life. And that's so cool because it inspires me to bring 100% of myself to my character because why why can't um, Hercules be like, what's good, Miss McGarrah? Or, you know, like, why why can't he say that? Um, so I've kind of been doing that. He does. <laughs> Not to does mention... Does he? Because I love that. That's why I love these these stagings they're really special and unique yeah and also like you're okay with zeus throwing thunderbolts but you can't have enough suspended <laughs> yeah. belief to have a black hercules right. yeah. <laughs> check yourself pal <laughs> yeah. people get real serious about the disney world you know what i'm saying so it's a thing but yeah. obviously we're not paying attention to that it's about you know it's about each of these actors on this stage have the right essence for their characters and that's what it's about so you mentioned the 200 New Yorkers. Are, what is the age range of these people? Is it young and old, like a nice mixed crew? It sounds yeah. really dynamic. I think, what's our youngest? Like a, like, like four? Four, four yeah. And yeah. up to like late the 80s. 80s. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. We have people who have like, you know, canes and assisted walking. And then we have kids who are running around all over the place. We've got people on roller skates. We have like everybody and their own. And it's own. not just old and young. There's like. Every every in between, the whole way. You can imagine. You've got 200 yeah. people. We have a, a actually a family of five, like a husband, wife, and their three kids are oh, yeah, all that's right. involved in the show. Um, so like it's a some great kids and their grandma are yeah. in the show as well. Great things yeah, for, the, the for the families to be able to come together and do theater. I can get why that would inspire you or re-inspire you as actors. Yeah. Because all sure. these people, it's a dream for them probably to participate in something like this. And, you know, the Delacorte is a really prestigious theater and the public theater. I mean, these are some things. This is my first time working at the Delacorte. And now I'm showing up with people who have done six productions there yeah. <laughs> who are community members. So they know more than I do, you know. So it's also a time to sort of humble yourself and say, okay, what can I learn here, you know. Let's talk about the music, because obviously the music is amazing. And you mentioned there's some new songs as well. Yeah. So do you guys have a favorite song that you perform or a favorite new song that you're excited for people to hear? Um, I think one of my favorite songs to sing has really become Go the Distance. Um, it's a classic. It's kind of like that, like, it's kind of like Let It Go. It has, like, this kind of feeling of, like, epicness to it that everyone can relate to. Um, and I think last time was the first time I sang the song for the entire community. Ooh, and he sings um, it real good. Yeah, it's so pretty. <laughs> um, and it just felt really, really, really uh, freeing. And it felt, um, there was an electricity in the room that I had never felt before. Um, so that's definitely one of my favorite. And there, uh, though we can't tell you the titles of the new songs, <laughs> um, I do have to say there are some really, really cool tunes um you know hades gets some hades really cool gets material. one yeah I you get some one. new material yeah there's even like a big new like huge community number that's like wait this wasn't in the movie it's so good yeah <laughs> yeah it all seems to fit i mean also because we have the same writers and they're they are just as passionate about hercules as they were when they wrote it you know yeah. so alan they, Rankin's still pumping out those tunes pumping them out loves them yeah. like is excited to create new worlds for these characters. Somebody should talk about how Alan Menken's good. <laughs> we don't do that enough. <laughs> you mentioned that you sang the song last night, which means you guys are rehearsing. Mm -hmm. uh, so what has that been like? Because if you guys haven't been, the Delacorte is an outdoor theater. And so not only are you focusing on the script and the songs, there's the elements. Yeah. So what has that been like for you guys? We've we have yet to brave the elements. Yeah, we've been indoors. No. We've the been indoors, well which is its own way. challenge because yeah. we have to have 200 people inside. And like, and there's not and a theater in. as big as the Delacorte to rehearse in. So yeah. you have to just sort of be like, or, or you'll be like, well, you'll be on another level. <laughs> so but I right guess now I'm just going to stand on top of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but we have been told, we have been briefed and, and, um, 
You've done a, a public work show before. Yeah. What, The Tempest? The Have first the raccoons come on did. stage? Yeah. Um, they didn't come on for The Tempest, but they did for Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah. yeah. We had a fake tree and they were up there. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just sort of been briefed that, like, you will be hot, you will be wet, you will be sweaty, yeah. and you will have a great time. And there will be bugs and there will be raccoons. But so. there is nothing like walking out on that stage and then feeling an actual breeze that's not made by a fan. Yeah. That makes you feel like, I'm New York. Yeah, exactly. This is amazing. Also, like, I, I performed at the Hollywood Bowl. That's the, like, the big outdoor thing that I've done at this point. And you realize, like, there's something about not performing. There's no ceiling. Like, not performing with a roof. You're like, oh, my God. Like, there's so many more possibilities. My body, your body feels like unchained and you've never heard your voice go as far as it's going and you're you kind of feel enormous and powerful and exciting yeah there's a moment in the show where uh we're on a, a date scene and i get to like talk about the uh the stars and to be able at that point of time to, it's gonna be dark enough to actually see the stars i cannot wait for that moment yeah i would say that's one of the coolest things whenever i go to these shows is that when you start it's light outside and then it gets mm -hmm. darker and darker and it really does sort of yeah, you feel like you're in something special. So I cannot. I mean, it's murder on the lights, but it is great. Yeah. yeah. No spotlights for about 45 minutes, and then we can, yeah. But yeah, it's so beautiful like that. Yeah. I cannot wait to see this show. Uh, before we go, though, we do have a couple of questions. So who do we have first? Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, so I have definitely been a huge fan of Hercules ever since I was a kid. It's like the first movie I remember seeing in the theater. Um, so I guess my question is, uh, do you guys have like a favorite part that you get to bring to life on stage or uh, just like a favorite line to say in the show? Zero to hero. Yeah, it's a, like such a dream. I don't get to be in any of those numbers. <laughs> um, turns out Meg is just like chilling in the underworld a lot. <laughs> Um, by herself, um, but uh, yeah. I'm the same, I don't get to do that, but to see the women who play the muses, <sighs> it's, it's like the movie, but better. Yeah, but real. It's shocking, and their, their instruments, if I may be so bold, <laughs> are uh, truly spectacular. I think I would just, I am in really enjoying performing with the cast that we have and watching people like make all of these choices that are a little bit different and exciting. La I, because I'm sort of chilling in the underworld, last night was the first time I got to see a lot of numbers put together. And I loved watching um, One Last Hope, which is, a, which is a song from the movie where they train Hercules, and this is where I'm telling you all of his uh, preparation is coming into play. <laughs> so it's, un it's, I was like, like just gobsmacked. So that's been really exciting. He's got a very healthy special skills section yeah. on his resume. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one more question. Hello. Hi. Um, so I heard that Roger Bart is actually also a part of the cast, and I know that he voiced the songs in the animated film for Hercules. I just wanted to know how that's been having him along. On oh, set. God, it's been terrible. Roger Bart is just awful. <laughs> no, he's the most amazing guy yeah. ever. And, you know, it, it actually last night he sent me a really heartfelt message um, once I got home. And I was mm -hmm. kind of like, how lucky am I to be doing this experience with you and to be working with you and to... Um, I remember the first time I sang Go the Distance in front of him, I wanted to poop my pants. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, you come to learn that, that that's, just, that's just what life is. It's like a, a beautiful cycle of, like, you started this, and now I'm helping to bring it to a different place. Um, and he's wonderful as Hades. Hilarious. Yeah, he really knows how to find everything. I know that's not a surprise, because he is Roger Bart, but he can find a laugh in a, a walk it's really impressive but he also gets to sing in this and he it's like this weird full circle moment where he is on on both ends of it that's so cool i can't wait to see this uh like like i said i'm a huge fan of the movie but i also really love what public works and the public theater does to things that we think that we know the way it's updated and modernized and it's always so much fun so i hope people have a chance to get and check it out if you do want to go you can catch hercules at the delacorte theater from august 31st through september 8th so go to publictheater.org for more information and give it up for the cast of hercules thank you guys